Welcome back to our YouTube channel. I'm here with Finn from The Veils, who are one of my favourite bands, and they've got a new album coming out called Total Depravity. I can't wait to hear all about it, Finn. I'm so excited. Um, so it's been in the works for a while. Um, how long did it take to record? We spent, it was about three years between the last record and this one, and I think we started working on it the second we finished the last. So, I mean, yeah, it's a good three years all up. I yeah, mm. I mean, you had a um, the track Iodine and Iron, mm. which sort of came on YouTube, it sort of surfaced, there's a, there's a live version of the video, there'll be a link, like, right here, oh, yeah. and, um, yeah, I mean, that, did that song exist before you started writing Total Depravity? Yeah, that sort of came later on, I guess, the idea to, we sort of keep a lot of songs as spares, and, you know, you sort of s steal parts from them occasionally, mm -hmm. and then other ones you just sort of take all of it and then sort of do something new with it. But that, yeah. that one had been sort of on my mind for a long time and wanted to, um, yeah, give it some proper okay. love. And uh, yeah. so we did. I mean, you said it sort of featured on the EP. Was that like an afterthought or just swap hands here? Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was uh, yeah, it was a bit of a, it was just sort of an acoustic version of this. You know, I, I think I'd written it two days before we had to put the EP out. So I sort of just added it on there. But I uh, hadn't had any time to sort of mm. blossom on it. So. Yeah, I mean, so on on the album, you were with LP from Run the Jewels. And that's mm. a really random collaboration if you think about it. So, how did you guys meet? Uh, we met in Los Angeles. We had a sort of very productive little period in, in LA, like, t I guess, two years ago after about a year or so of writing. And uh, we met up and had some nice mojitos. Maybe it was a margarita. I, I think the fact that you can't remember is probably a really good sign. We had a great time. It was a good, it was a good time. It was a very good night. And then so I think the next day we recorded Axolotl, or at least the beginnings of it. Yeah, I mean, do you think having sort of more of an urban producer, our artist is, you know, artist himself, from the mm. huge, um, on your album, do you think it sort of gave it a much of a different outcome to your previous sort of four others? Yeah, I think it was a mixture of him obviously having a, a, a large influence on it, but also the, I mean, the direction we were heading in before that was already pretty dramatically mm. different. Uh, we'd had our own studio in East London for a year or so at that point. We were going in there every day and sort of dicking around and making weird noises and writing songs out of loops, you know, rather than the traditional sort of, my traditional approach with a piano or a guitar. So that sort of led us down a, a path, mm -hmm. and then I think we sort of, once LP was involved, it just sort of um, kind of amplified that even more. So we kind of, uh, I mean, Axolotl really led the charge. Yeah, and so the first one that you recorded, apart from, yeah. Idea, yeah, right? it was the first thing we sort of completed, really, the mm -hmm. whole thing. I mean, that was, yeah, uh, that was a, a couple of years ago now, so that really led the, yeah, led the charge. Yeah, I mean, it's quite a chargeful song as well. It's very, mm -hmm. you know, brawling and belting it's quite a statement of intent yeah um and where was cool. um total depravity recorded i understand it was in several different locations yeah it was um yeah london we did all the stuff with the band was all recorded in london mm -hmm. and then uh whenever jamie jamie was on tour with run the jewels and we were touring um as well so it was basically sort of stealing time where we could from um from him and then i went over to upstate new york we just got this place up there during the big um, blizzard, and we were sort of in there for a few <laughs> weeks, sort of working on things. That was really good. That was a good productive session. And we were in Portugal for a bit just because mm. he was doing a show and he had a few days off. It was, it was a lot of me traveling around with sort of hard drives, nervously traveling around with hard drives. Oh my god. Yeah, that's, a lot of, that's mostly what I remember. <laughs> it's like you read, you know, read stories about Taylor, someone like you know, delivering Taylor Swift's. So a little dongle thing on, on a private jet and you think that's a yeah. job I would never want. <laughs> well, yeah, that'd be all right. Like the, apparently in the old days you used to, if you were with tape and you went in the tube, uh, there were certain points, this might just be a total uh, lie, but my, my, I think my dad told me this, you go through certain things and they'd have, in the tunnels and it, would, it had like magnets and it would just wipe. So there's these stories of sort of tape ops taking the tapes on a train and just wiping the entire record. Oh my so this is what the, They've got weird new security things now as well with the like x-rays that rotate around you and stuff. On the tube? 
Yeah. No, like on the, on the in the airport. In the airport. Yeah. So it's like, oh, it's, yeah, I got a bit paranoid about it towards the end. But it was all okay. There was an album. It's out at the end of this month. Yeah. It's all good. Oh, I still can't hold it. So I'm still, I still have sort of fears about it. Just like, I don't know, I've lost the thing or something and it's gone. No, uh, I've it's heard the promo. It's okay. The music is there. You've got the promo now. <laughs> I've got the promo. All it's right. fine. I've heard it and it's, it's a really special all record. Right, okay. So moving, you know, obviously you've got the moving of locations. Do you think mm. every time you sort of moved or that process of, you know, creating al- part of an album here and part of an album there, when you brought it all together, do you think that the outcome was probably different to what you intended at the start because of those external influences? Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't know if it's just me, but I I don't know where I'm going at any point in my day, let alone in my sort of artistic <laughs> life. Like probably the least of all in in that side of mm. my life. I think it's completely. Um, the more I try to be consciously involved uh, with where we're heading or where I want it to go, I, I, it seems to be massively detrimental. And um, so I kind of just I, I I've. This album, probably more so than any, of have just had a, a, an approach of not getting in the way of it, and when mm-hmm. it's when it feels like it's finished, then it's finished. But really, not trying to direct it at all, other than in terms of you know uh, making it feel like it, it's what I, I what I want, I guess. And when it feels like it's what I wanted, then yeah. it's, then it must be done. That's good. Um, it's a sort of relinquishing control uh, of the of the enterprise. Yeah. It's sort of a kind of empowering thing to do as well. And it has its own weird sense of direction as well. That yeah. I, you know, I haven't really worked out why that is, but it, it really does. And it's sort of better if I just leave the room Let it sometimes. Go. Yeah. Where does the name come from? Like why? What's Total Depravity mean? Um, well, yeah, it was a song first. It's the, the last song on the record. Um, and it was the first... Uh, album title I, I wrote down ages ago sort of perversely as well because I've, mm-hmm. I've had notebooks full of other titles that again sort of wandered off into weird places and then it just ended up being the first thing I wrote down anyway so it was um I guess uh, a kind of it was a thread that I felt ran through mm-hmm. everything and, and the uh, renaissance style artwork really goes as well the album's cover yeah it tied in very nicely with that it just um, again it just felt uh, as soon as I saw that image, it was sort of stressful because I saw it and then was like, oh, that, that was definitely the cover. Uh-huh. And, you know, usually you ask people to use their artwork for stuff and you can never really tell which way it's going to go. But uh, Nicola was so cool and you just said, yeah, please, Have it. please definitely use that. That's so awesome. that was great. And it was a nice day. But I had a, you know, a panicky few days before that. Like, what is your favorite track from the record? Yes, I don't know, and it's very special to me. I think because it was on the sort of the slag heap, and then we sort of brought it back. I'm oh, sorry, it's it's fine, it's okay. uh, So that was good. Uh, it's a nice feeling when you know something nearly just sort of goes, and then you resuscitate it or something. Mm-hmm. So that was a nice feeling. Yeah. And uh, yes, swimming with the crocodiles would be enough. I mean, they're, they're, we haven't actually played any of them live yet, and that tends to be what dictates. Yeah. how I feel the most about them. There's been other records where I was really sure that that was, you know, that was the best of them. And then mm-hmm. we play it live and it just sort of, I don't know, disappeared. Or, it's sort of weird because you, you spend so much time on these things. But really you're just in this little room, you know, either if it's just you or with the band or with producers or, you know, you have years of that. And then even when it's out, you're still really just in your little room with people like, you know, it's like a tweet. Oh, like, oh that was good. Yeah. You're still really in here like, oh, shit. It's like you're still in your tiny little room, mm-hmm. but then you, when you're out on the stage, uh, there's nothing, there's no barrier then between the people that are listening to it and you making it. And it's just, it seems very obvious then. I'm just like, oh, right, okay, no, that you know, that one was a bit pretentious or that one went on a little bit. Sorry, that yeah. in, intro should have been half, half the length. Yeah. So it's nice to, um, yeah, it's an important bit. You sort of realise the strength of some songs that you didn't realize had a certain strength in them. So like on the record, you've got, you know, L. Ron Hubbard makes a cameo, you know, you've mm. got some personal experience in there and then almost, you know, you take on the specter of a salamander at some point. So like, but you've still got like the loss and the longing and the dark side of the veil sound still like under there. I mean, wh- why the switch at what sort of brought on some of those characters? Characters that 
I found interesting in some way. But again, because I try and get out of the way, you know, as much as possible. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't expect necessarily, you know, um, Ingrid Bergman and L. Ron Hubbard would feature. I wasn't so sort of, ah, well, there they are. I guess they're, uh, I guess they're important to me in some way. <laughs> so, um, do you think the Vale's music is influenced? Um, in some, you know, you're growing up surrounded by music. Your dad was one of the founding members in, you know, Ecstasy. So, you know, people around the house, um, you know, growing up listening to music. Yes. Uh, well, now I mean it's weird because I didn't start making music until I until I moved to New Zealand with my mother properly. Um, when I was sort of 12, it was almost immediately after moving there I started playing music and before that I had no interest in it whatsoever. I think because of growing up surrounded mm. by very malnourished, sort of weird, pale <laughs> musicians. And you know when you're a kid and you're a bit of an asshole and you're like, ah, like tattoos are bad, why are you smoking? <laughs> <laughs> I was sort of one of those kids. Say so that's like David Bowie or something like that. David Bowie's just hanging out yeah. in the house. It's a yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. It was like a weird um, period, and it didn't you know? And it was always what took Dad away, and it was always it always seemed the source of all this sort of drama mm. and pain and like insecurity. And um, so I don't know. I sort of I guess, and maybe also just needed to get away from it to not feel like it was weird for me to do it or something. Like mm. that. But basically, as soon as I got there, I started writing. Songs mm -hmm. and um, yeah, so and it took a while. It took a few years of sort of um, researching, you know, m music myself, and and then sort of been like, oh, you know, yeah, that's that's David Bowie, that's Iggy Pop, that's you know, and sort of putting things together, yeah. I guess, it's, and uh, and you know, an XTC and Shriek Back and um, yeah, but it came. It took a while. It was sort of as I and going to further into my adolescence, sort of piecing together. Yeah. You know who my dad was and what it meant. That must have been a really fascinating journey. Yeah, it was cool. You know, you just like, I, I, yeah, I think it's meant more as I've gotten a little older and when I moved back to London, obviously, um, yeah. we now, you know, compare songs and records when we finish a record, we'll play it to each other. And mm. so I think he's been very influential in, I guess, mostly my approach to things and never taking anything too seriously, which wasn't, you know, my na my sort of screensaver is to get really sort of emotional mm. and sort of stressed out by things. <laughs> so he was good, you know, especially when he first got signed to Rough Trade and things were, you know, going along. Like, who inspires you in terms of sing like, you know, singers and songwriters, like other artists? Tom Waits and Dylan and mm. Nina Simone and Roy Orbison and, um, yeah, they were the sort of, it's hard to get over them really. Like you get into other bands and mm. things and you know there's obviously lots of people now making interesting things but I, they, I sort of go back to them they're sort of the voice in my head yeah being like that's not really good enough you should do that again and you uh -huh. know they're sort of the, they're encouraging yeah. they're harsh critics but they're good to have in there that's good to have to keep pushing yourself <laughs> forward though it's back yeah. to the whole learning thing yeah so a bit of a sidetrack now so you are going to be in David Lynch's remake of Twin Peaks which is a rather special thing mm. I mean what can you, how did that come about first of all uh, we were recording a song off our new record in uh, in his house, which sort of came about through Dean Hurley, who's his um, producer and engineer, and worked on both David solo records and also his soundtracks and things. So, yeah, we just had a great day, you know, up there. <laughs> and uh, it just sort of we're not allowed to know a lot about this. Is yeah, that what can like, you tell us? Well, again, yeah, this uh, just reminds me of. Like being annoying when someone on a talk show, like I can't talk about that. But I actually can't. So we have to sign yeah, fifty pages of things. Wow, that's hefty. You don't want to get involved in legal. Yeah. Well, neither do we. Neither do we. But it's available <laughs> next year. It'll be out in two thousand seventeen, right? We can say that much. Yeah, as far as I know. I mean, yeah. Um, like what's next? Yeah, it's, it's been yeah. a while. Keep following that scent. Thank you. Will do. There's great. No, no choice in the matter. <laughs> it's really great to meet you, Finn. Thank you so much for your time. Best of luck with the album. Thank you, Kim. <laughs>